Right, we ready? Yep. Here we go. This is the first Q&A in how long? Four years. Uh, four years. Four years. Four years. So welcome back, everyone. The first Del and Dave Q&A in four years. Now, we're only doing this because both of us are a bit wounded. And we make a little. A little. And uh, we thought it'd be a gentle thing to do to ease us back into everything we do in the garages. So... Pen and pit stop, compare today, or are we doing it different? We're doing it different today. What are we doing? Uh, you got two questions each. Two each, right, yeah. What we thought was, we'd do this a little bit more like a podcast. So we've got two questions each. These are questions we lifted from the old bank of questions we had way long ago that were interesting and fun, we thought, didn't we? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Just pretty much. Yeah. And, and then what, what we, do we know? Yeah, <laughs> we don't much anyway. <laughs> what we also thought we'd like you to get involved on this one. So in the comments box, there's only six questions. We're going to time ourselves to five minutes on each question only. That means it's only a half hour video at the most, hopefully. But you can have your say in the comments. So each of these questions, if you've got an opinion, drop it in the comments and it will give us something to watch and read at the end. Yeah. And, nice every, and everybody's got an opinion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. People love nothing more than having yeah. an opinion. They're like belly buttons, aren't they? They yeah, are. Everybody's got one. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so who's going to start? Who's well, got the best one? We've got one? the tea. Got tea? Oh. And we always got have to have cake. Well, we, well, we're not allowed, though. This is the thing. Well, well unless you've got any celery it's cake. It's a special day. Celery cake. Right? Carrot cake, ch- cherry bakewell, or blueberry muffin. Oh, is that a choice? Mm-hmm. Carrot cake. What's the choice again? Carrot cake, bakewell tart, or blueberry muffin. After you, mate. Well, I know what I'd like. Go on, then. But oh, I'd like cherry bakewell, but it's probably right. not allowed, is it? Oh, a cherry you. bakewell. I'll have a, I'll have a blueberry muffin, please. Okay. Knackered. That's brilliant. Look at that. It's knackered. (laughs) Knackered muffins. A bit like us, really, mate. It is. We're both knackered, so we've got knackered cakes. Knackered knackered in a bar. A bar of a bar of knackered cake. I like that. So it's gluten free, wheat free, dairy free, raw fruit and nut. So it's dust. Or my my carrot cake. So this is vegan cake then? It must be. <laughs> what, made out of vegans? <laughs> Leave it. Leave it. Oh dear. Right. Tea first of all. Calm down. Oh. We're going to give this a go. Absolutely. Now, who's it's, going to ask the first question? Does what? it actually taste like a cherry bakewell though? That's the question. Is it no. cherry? No. no. <laughs> Blueberry muffin. It's all right though. Is it right? Blueberry <laughs> muffin. See what it tastes like. <laughs> Not, it's not like a blueberry muffin. That really isn't massive. <laughs> it's okay, but it's not. It doesn't taste of Bakewell tart. Oh, I don't know. There's a there's a there's an aftertaste of Bakewell. It's After all the thought. chemicals in it. Yeah, it probably <laughs> is. Yeah. I bet that's got more E numbers no, than it's a blue not. fizzy drink. No. The, Where, where's the um? The, ah. It's anyway. All natural. We're getting off the point here, aren't we? Yeah. We are. Sorry. These cakes. We're getting engrossed in cakes. So this is what we do. We've we barely, barely started and we're digressing. We're digressing and talking rubbish already. Right. Okay. Who's first? Who wants to go first? Um, I'll, I'll go first. I've got a good question. Go on then. Okay. Right. Five minutes on this question. You've both had major heart scares. How has that changed your outlook on life, bikes and your work? Oh, you first. Well, <clears throat> quite a lot, really. Um, I mean, I recognise that the issues I've had in the last few months are of, um, are a lifestyle thing. So, you know, that's working Thanks long hours, time. lots of stress because of the hours of work and the lack of breaks and the getting in late and living on microwave rubbish. Yeah. Um, the best way to change all that was not going to work. So, <laughs> so I don't. I think that'd help everyone. Yeah, I've, I've to become self-unemployed. <laughs> Self-unemployed. So, self-unemployed, that's what I'm like done. That. Just temporary, though. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a sabbatical. But then being with what you do, I guess you can do freelance and stuff. Oh, I can do a little bit of freelance. I can do a bit, you know, bits and pieces and, and say it, it's it's a temporary thing. It's a sabbatical just to get back on my feet and then yeah. I shall get back into the real world. But for the time being, mm. I, I've sort of, I've met it head on and ditched that. Yeah. Um, likewise, uh, I, I, I did early on find the XJR really difficult to manage. You know, yeah. it's quarter of a tonne. You know, it's and, and I'm and weak as a kitten, <laughs> but nowadays, but that's improving. Um, yeah. Well, I'm hearing from so many people that you'll get back to normal. Yeah, I think you will. One thing I've really, well, we've been able to enjoy is a massive amount of support from viewers who've had heart attacks and telling us that the first six to eight, 12 weeks, you will be weak as a kitten. 
mm. and that lifestyle has to change. So temporarily, because I'm only five weeks in, you're a little bit longer. I mean, overall, I'm seven months in. Seven, so. yeah, since yours. I mean, I'm, I can definitely vouch for what you said way back at the beginning, that you do feel just pathetic and weak. You can't lift anything, but mm. that goes. It does improve, yeah. and that's fine. So how it's changed for my bike, nothing. Nothing will change no. my love of bikes, nothing no. at all. But I think what you said, sabbatical, definitely. Yeah. I think... I've got a day job and everything we do on YouTube, and that adds up to almost a hundred hour week. So as I've got a vocational license and I drive a coach, that license has been temporarily suspended while I'm health checked and I get back to normal. And if I do, then I'll get my license back. If I don't, then I won't get my job back. So yeah. we'll see. So at the moment, I don't have a day job, so I'm the same. Yeah. Self partially unemployed at this point. Which is why we're able to do this on a Wednesday. <laughs> yes, sir. Best day of the week to do it. Yeah. Nice and quiet out there. So how are we doing for time? It's not bad. What do you think, personally? Having been the, the carer for me carer. since, and we've known of Days of Shoes ever since it started, how does it feel from your side of the fence, being uh, someone who takes care of a heart attack patient? Uh, quite stress. It's quite stressful because you never know what 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 each day is going to bring. Um, but the outlook is definitely less work, m- more uh, yeah. chill time, and uh, just sort of uh, just enjoy the small, simple things in life. Yeah, yeah. I did have a viewer said that because I said that, you know with the medication you get good days and bad yeah. days, and one guy quickly slapped me in correction and said, "There's no bad days. It's a good day if you wake up and the birds are singing." Yeah, mm. yeah, it could always be Every worse. Day's a good day. Every day's a good day. Yeah. And, and you go and ride your yeah. motorbike. You're back on your bike within what? Four uh, or five weeks? Uh, yeah, about four weeks. I was back on the bike, and and so despite you. despite the uh, the issues with the weight of the XJR, I am riding it now regularly. I don't have the issues with it that I thought I had. You know, that's gone away. And I mean, I do have an advantage here because obviously I've been through this twice. Yeah, uh, my, mine mine all started. Can't do anything once. Can no, you? well, well, I, well, I wasn't sure first time. So I, thought <laughs> <that happened. laughs> so, so. I quite like that. I might do it again. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, mine all started before Christmas, and then you know, and then I had some. As a result of that, the the recent stuff was elective surgery. As a result of what I had, you know, previously, so I knew what to expect. Um, so that kind of gives me an edge this time. Yeah, right. yeah experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nothing like that. experience. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I definitely think that a sabbatical from my day job mm. is going to help me a lot because when I do get back to a hundred percent life, I want to stay there. Yeah. and move on. There's loads of people who said that they had their heart attack 25 years ago. Yeah. They've never been fitter and they weren't as fit before the heart attack. So I, no, yeah. that is massively encouraging yeah. to know that what waits for you, a score down the line, yeah. is good. And I mean, at what? I'm, we're the same age. So yeah. in, in your mid-50s, you look to that point because that's your retirement years. Yes. And I want a long retirement. I yes. want to be 99 and irritating all the staff in the care home <laughs> and still have a motorbike, yeah. if possible. I might not ride it much, but I still want to have one to irritate the neighbours with. Because it's important, isn't it? I'm going to live with my children. I'm going to be incontinent and I'm going to slam all the doors and leave the lights on. <laughs> like they do. Except the incontinent bit. <laughs> Well, they were babies once, weren't That's they? That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and on that note, I think we better move on. <laughs> we better move on. Right, who's next? Do you want to do the next one? Next yeah, one. why not? Right. Do the next question. <clears throat> okay, so question number two. Um, how do you choose the right bike after your test when you have no experience? Interesting. 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 How did you choose your bike, My bike? after your test? What were the factors? Right. What, what did you have after your test? Uh, LC 350. Yamaha 350 LC after a test. <laughs> Wheelie monster. Awesome. A wheelie monster. Awesome. And, and learnt to wheelie it within a short time, whether it was intentional or not. Anyway, how did you choose that? What was back, it? Back then, long time ago, they were really cheap. I paid £350 for a 350LC. Not like did that. Did you get £350 we paid for a reasonably nice early 350LC, a pre power valve model? You've got a foot peg for that now. You, you wouldn't know, exactly. Now they're about £5,000 and they're all modified, so mm. that's a real but thing. But it was lightweight. It was, cheap. it was a little tall and it was cheap, so I knew that if I dropped it, it wasn't the end of the world, right. um, which I did a couple of times. It's a bit like a trail bike, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. If, you have if, you're, a, if you're not prepared to push it over on the drive, you know, and yeah. scratch it. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. I think there's the moral. You're, you're not, not going to get the best out of it, are you? Yeah, don't buy your dream bike as your first bike. Mm. I mean, we'd all like that, but yeah. you're going to possibly drop it, even if even a static drop in the you, driveway. You, you are, yeah. In fact, actually, yeah. you're probably more likely to drop it stationary than you yeah. are riding the damn yeah. thing. But, I mean, but, um, having worked in the bike trade for 10 years, I saw a lot of young lads pass their test 
come straight in and strap themselves up for five years yeah. with a loan for a medium weight commuter bike yeah. that they couldn't afford on 100% finance and be basically tied to it for years mm. longer than they want to be. So I'd say buy something just to get you going and get some experience. But, and also, you know, in, in terms of choice, you know, the chances are that the reason your friends are your friends is because you all think alike. So ultimately, you will probably end up riding what they ride. So yeah. whether that's sports bikes, cruisers, yeah, you know, whatever it might yeah. be, you know, you you tend to ride what your mates ride. You do, yeah. We covet what we see, yeah, as they yeah. say. Yeah. What do you think? What made you choose your first bike after your test? If you don't remember taking your test because it was so long ago, then tell us the story as well. It's always interesting to read, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because every motorcycle rider has got a story about what bikes they love, what made them choose it, yeah. and of course, it finances when you're young. Are a big factor, aren't they? Yeah. You know, your success. Yeah, 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 they are. I mean, it, it is a, it's a big, it's a big deal, isn't yeah. it? I mean, particularly if you know, if you're, if you're, I mean, when I was seventeen, obviously I was going through my, you know, apprenticeship and whatever. You, you're not on big money. No, you're not. That's you know, so you know, and, and it's your only wheels. And it, 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 it's, it has to be everything. It, it's Does, transport. It? It's fun. It's, yep. it's everything. It has to be everything. My fizzy when I was sixteen, you know, or after my test. Straight away, I got a Suzuki GS750. Yeah. Straight away, because it was a bit of a muscle bike. All the local patch club guys were all big jack muscle yeah. bikes. And it was films like Stone yeah. and Mad Max and everyone were big Z900s. And that's what we all wanted. It was you covet what you see, yeah. what you see out there. There yeah. weren't really any Harleys about. I love Harleys now. Yeah. But there was yeah. no motivation for me in 1982, at the age of 17, to buy a Harley Davidson. No. Didn't no. see them, didn't see them on the roads. You, you just didn't see them. No, there was, there there was no dealership network, they weren't out there on the no, road. That was the, the dark days of Harley, yeah. wasn't it? So I think yeah. that's it, it's what's available. And the marketing. Yeah. Yeah. These days, we're, with the internet, we're yeah. I, I mean, slaves in, to marketing, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, then all you had was motorcycle news and uh, that was about it, really. And, yeah. and, and which motorcycle bike and magazines. bike magazine. Yeah. Um, and also custom bikes. Remember, there was, if you go back to AWOL magazine, mm. Backstreet Heroes magazine, all the mm. custom bike mags, nothing was standard, was it? But that was an aspiration. At 17, the chances are you're going to go and buy a standard bike, yeah. aren't you? Because it's about, you know, choosing that first bike yeah. after your test. You might aspire to a custom bike but you're unlikely to buy one at 17 or, right. or, or indeed build one at 17 yeah. because you've got to ride it to work in the morning. Definitely. And, and, you, can't, and you can't do that if it's propped up on a milk crate in the backyard. Can you? <laughs> no. And there's another thing, in it? It's something you can fix. Yeah. And you go back to a motorcycle, yeah. you can easily fix yourself. Yeah. This is what we did the channel for in the first place yeah. was so many people are unable to fix their own bike because bikes have become quite sophisticated now and yeah. quite difficult to fix. We've now got motorcycles with engine warning lights, check engine lights yeah. coming on on motorcycles. Yeah. People can't even put an exhaust on their bike mm. without considering fueling and, and CO2 sensors and all, yeah, O2 sensors yeah. and all yeah. that sort yeah. of thing, yeah. so that they have to think like a car technician. When you and I did it, yeah. you just took the exhaust off and drilled the baffle out, yeah. put it back on because it's loud, and that's cool. It's just different generations, isn't yeah. it? So there we are, interesting question, cool. Right, my turn next. Oh, you can go next. Okay, I've got this interesting one. Now, this question's popped up several times over the years, and I just want to answer it again because it's common and it's constant, and I see bikes out there all the time suffering with this. And the question is, how do you get melted plastic off of chrome, like your exhaust pipe, without scratching it? So you get a plastic bag, piece of debris, the heel of your boot. Yeah, I know how to put it on. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we've done that. <laughs> And also, it's things like your waterproofs, isn't it? Yeah. On a Harley, you'll often get melted plastic from the inside of your right leg on your front downpipe because it gets hot, melts the rubber. If you wear old-fashioned rubber waterproofs or cheap pull-on trousers, yeah. it's quite easy to do. The method I've always found, have you, have you got a way to do it yourself? Well, I do it much the same as everybody else. I mean, you, yeah. know, you, you have to consider it was nice and warm and tacky when it went on. Yeah. It melted so, on, so it will melt so off. So it will melt off. Yeah, I mean, if it's chrome, you mustn't heat it with a flame because that will damage the chrome and it will, it will discolour it. But use a hot gun for your decorating or even a hot hairdryer on its hottest setting and play it on the plastic to get it really soft until it's chewy and sticky. Mm. Then you can use like a lolly stick or a coffee stirrer stick, a wooden stick, and scrape off the worst. And then, after that, when there's nothing left but a little bit of residue, it's the old trick, while it's still warm, of Coca-Cola yeah. and tinfoil. That really works. And also that helps you get rust off chrome as well, doesn't yeah. it? It's such an old trick, isn't it? Imagine what it's doing to your teeth. 
<laughs> and you're inside. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have never joke. I've never been into Pepsi and Coke. I don't drink that no, stuff. And I it's... certainly don't eat tin foil. No, I don't. Not a lot of it anyway. It makes you fillings hurt. It doesn't. It? Yeah, you should get a bit stuck to a cake. Or well, it's like it's a nightmare. It's a Mr. Kipling's, and I'm in a hurry. Yes, yeah, sometimes you catch a bit or a pasty when you're in a real rush. But that's the point. Yeah. Coca-Cola and tin foil. If you ever try that, that will help you get the plastic off. You have to warm it up first, and you, the tin foil itself, or the aluminium foil, if you're in America, that stuff's soft and it, will, it won't scratch the chrome. And something chemically in the cola will soften it up and get it off. And it does a really good job. Then after that, you can clean up with like Autosol. Yeah, yeah, good old Autosol. I mean, it, I mean that, there's a reason it's been available for donkey's years, and that's because it, it does what it says it's on, the, good. on yeah. the... Well, it's not a tin, is it? It does what it says on the tube. On the tin, it's a metal tube. Yeah, actually, you could probably clean your teeth with that, couldn't you? After you've had the coke. I'll let you have a go. After you've had the coke. After you've had the coke, yeah. yes. Yeah. You look like that bloke out of the Bond film, did not you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's it. And of course, any of the cleaning tricks, we love them. I love anything that is like the Harpic cleaning stuff off stainless steel, not chrome. Don't use Harpic on exactly. chrome because you'll yeah. burn it. But it's yeah. any of the acid-based bathroom cleaners can get stainless steel up. We did that as a video rerun just recently. It works really well. And it's great because the products, in inverted commas, out there can often be really expensive. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean digressing slightly I mean this is like chain cleaners isn't it you can spend a fortune on various manufacturers chain cleaners and you don't need to no that's you right know, there, there are tips and tricks yeah from paraffin to diesel to kerosene you, you know that, anything yeah, you yeah. Know, which, yeah which you can buy for tons even chain loop um, you get the chain oiling systems yeah. Uh, you can put chainsaw oil in them yeah. instead of the to be honest, dedicated to oil to be honest you, you, you do a lot worse than just putting engine oil in them yeah, yeah, but it does fling off a little bit too yeah, much. Yeah, get a bit you of want fling, to stick but if, you, if you want to clean the chain, you know, oh, yeah. as opposed to, you know. Yeah, did a video on that. Yeah. Cleaning the chain with fresh engine oil. Yeah. Get it all in a big old litter tray, scrub it up. So there's loads of options like that. But for chrome, definitely warm it up with a hot gun. Mm. Scrape off the worst with a lolly stick or a wooden stick. And then once you've done that, the residue will finally scratch off or scuff off with a little bit of tin foil and some cola. Gets it off a treat. Works every time. And you get to have a lolly first. <laughs> nothing like a lolly. Glad for like that, right? It is, yeah. What's your favourite lolly? When I was at school, they used to do the bat and ball. So it was a cone with the ice cream on top, and yeah. you'd have an, a lolly Stick. stuck in the hey, top. Wicked. Oh, yeah. What was that called? A screwball? Scru- no, nah, screwball was the, the chewing little thing with the, with the little a sort of bubble chew, gum. Chewing gum. Yeah, bubble yeah gum a bubble gum in the bottom, bottom and ice cream. Oh, I used to like them. Yeah. And a blue. Remember blue lollies? Blue, blue ice cream made your tongue go blue. <laughs> like a jubbly or something, wasn't it? Anyway, we moved on quite a lot. So whose well, turn is it next? Is yours um, next? Oh yeah, I can do the next question. Um, right. What bike would your twelve-year-old self buy? <laughs> well, I, I, well, I know. So what, what bike would your what would you buy when you're twelve? So when I was twelve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I know what bike was on my bedroom wall when I was twelve. I had a poster of a motor KB1, which was the, the Kawasaki thousand engine right. in a frame that actually went round corners. I think all and, the motors were. Just a revelation in handling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were about making bikes handle properly. Well, I mean, this was a time, wasn't it, when the Japanese were were getting really, really good at making stuff go fast, but they forgot about going around corners. And stopping. So people like Bimota and and, you know, and and the sort of the Rickman brothers and and all these... Eagly and stuff And all these people, you know, there was a whole market for taking something and making it really exotic. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, for me, when I was 12 years old... It was Evil Knievel. Yeah. It was 1977, and I had the toy that you yeah, did that yeah, with, yeah. and it went across the room. I bet he had the suit with the flares I'll bet, I'll and the big belt I wouldn't well. possibly comment. He's probably still got it. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. I'm not saying a word. I deny everything. I didn't have a full, no, and it was a bit like an Elvis suit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that was the thing, wasn't it? I think Evil Knievel wanted to be Elvis. So or what, was it the other way Evil around? Evil Knievel has left the building. He has left the building. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone over the building. Didn't you and see Evil Knievel once? I did, I did. I went to see Evil Knievel in Wembley, at Wembley, in uh, I think it was 76. And so, yeah, that would have been a, what would it have been? Um, Harley Davidson XR750? Yeah, yeah. Or was it an XR? Well, Fast? controversially, he used to ride Triumphs quite a lot as well, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I think, I think American history has sort of brushed over that a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But then again, that's it. For me, I think when I was 12, it was to be Eva Knievel. Mm-hmm. What about you? What was your, when you were 12 years old, what would be the bike that you would have wanted for yourself at the age of 12? I mean, either that or a rally chopper, wouldn't it? <laughs> Definitely. It's got to be a chopper. 
<laughs> definitely. And you just have to lower the seat right down yeah. as low as it could go. Yeah. So the bars, were, they seemed like they were big apex. Yeah. Definitely very cool. Awesome. And I mean, the gears as well. There's never been anything, a three-speed Three Sturmy Archer. Three-speed Sturmy no, Shifter Sturmy in the middle. Yeah. There's yeah. never been anything quite like that ever since, yeah. is there? Definitely. I so. wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much injury, I think. <laughs> Tiny little wheel on the front, big fat one on the back. But there you go. That was ultimately, yeah. when you were a kid, it was all about wanting what your mates wanted. Yeah, yeah. It? well, it, it comes back to this whole, yeah, what, what do you aspire to and yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are your mates doing? Definitely. Yeah. Who's next? Uh, is it me? Yeah, I think it will be. Right, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> this could be a while, take a while. Right. Uh, what or whom, if you could, would you change in history? Oh, yeah. philosophical. Oh, who or what would you change in history? Yeah. Penny first, what do you reckon? What or who would you oh change? Oh my God, I, I have no idea. I've been thinking about this question all night and right. I was thinking, there's so many things, isn't there? There, there, right. is, there is so much. So many there? things. The line-up of your favourite band? Oh, well you didn't ask me the question about what I would have bought for at 12. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this one, let's rewind a bit. What bike would you like at the age of 12, Penny? I wasn't into bikes at 12, I was into ABBA. <laughs> That's kind of answered it there, really, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> right, so moving back to this anyway. philosophical question, ABBA. I tell you what, I get that. A lot of people like ABBA, but personally, not really so much. Sorry, I'm I mean, they, you have to make a comment. Enormously <laughs> successful. You have to ask yourself. You don't have to admit to anything. No, I'm, I'm, it was I'm not admitting. Because of people anyway. like me, Dave. Yeah, I think you used to like it a lot, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. well, well, I think they like me. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I got my hair cut, and it all just sort of fell it apart. It all just fell apart. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I reckon this philosophical. But what or whom would you change in history? You don't know. It's hard, isn't it? It it's is hard difficult. because it's, very you, you, it's yeah. easy to go to the most obvious and get yeah. rid of this person or that, yeah. Yeah. Of or that event and yeah, this yeah. event. I think we'd all get rid of the bad people in history. But, yeah. that's, but then the, consequence, that's danger the, the consequences are, are unimaginable. You're creating like sliding doors, you know. aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Sliding, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and there's a certain amount of arrogance in, a, in imagining that you know better than yeah you know i mean if you could fate or whatever you want to call it yeah if you could do something obvious like delete world war Two, yeah well imagine the changes to the whole world that that would make yeah. so it's difficult to know you could actually be making life worse yeah you could you can only really imagine any of well, these things well anyway. i mean at the risk of being controversial most medical improvements are brought about through conflict yeah. Whether that's plastic surgery because airmen have been brought yeah. down in burning yeah. planes yeah. or whatever it might so be. So there, there you are. Imagine that, yeah. You know, I mean, this is the, the Titanic paradox, isn't it? Yeah. More people have been saved through the, the, the safety measures that have been brought in as a result of the Titanic sinking than died yeah. on that night in the North Atlantic. Mm. So, yeah. if you, so if their you, impact has been exactly. great. So if you, yeah. didn't, if, you, if you didn't hit an iceberg, mm. whilst you might, you know, in the short term you save those people, it, throughout... You know, time the going next hundred and twenty years. You yeah. know, the, the the people that die as a result, mm. you, you know, is many times over. So it, there's an there's an element of arrogance in there about mm. about thinking you know yeah. best. Yeah. Well, I personally have always had a view, or an uh, a wonder, something I'm not sure about. What would the world be like mm. without the internet or mm. the web? Mm. Oh my god! You'd well, actually we... have to get dressed and go out to the shops. <laughs> get get out your dressing gown. <laughs> And go to work yeah. on foot. <laughs> what, no eBay? No <laughs> eBay. So, no, you, what, you'd have to send a postal order and wait 28 days for something to arrive, a, like Kay's catalogue, wouldn't it? Gratins. <laughs> or put a card in the window yes. in a local shop. Yeah. Remember that, 15p for a week. Yeah. But there you are. Imagine yeah. the world today without the web or the internet or social media. Yeah. None of it. I know we wouldn't be here either. So there's that. It's kind of self-facing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be an interesting point. What would the world be like? I wouldn't necessarily wish for that. Because, no, the, no. like you just said, with the concept of, of the Titanic, so many good things yeah. have come from the web and the internet, mm. but equally so many bad as yeah. well. And of course, the internet has facilitated the growth of terrorism yeah. and various yeah. other bad things. So without it, the world would be so different. And, and it's not something you can test either, is it? Because no. you can't switch it off. No, there's no. the other thing. It's like the, the parody on... Terminator movies of mm. Skynet where once it's out and once it's yeah. rolling it's permanent and there's yeah. nothing you do it's, it's self-perpetuating yeah. there's too many feeds in to the internet from it's too like, many different it's like a thousand it's like rivers peeing in the swimming pool isn't it yeah. one, one, you, you can't bailing it out with a spoon you, yeah you can't get it back can you no mm. exactly and that's it someone mentioned it. it's a bit like 
every river in, in all the countries in the world feeding the oceans and mm. trying to stop them all at once. Yeah. It's just not, you're never going to stop the internet now it's started. Yeah. So is it a monster we've created? And what mm. for the future? If you, there's a, a series of books by that Yuval Harari. Yes. And it's fascinating what he talks about, Homo Deus, that mm. we're in charge of this thing. Human beings are in charge of the web and the internet and it's a monster. And our control of it is still in its juvenile infancy. Mm. I think I've said this in a previous q and I don't think we're yet capable of controlling the internet in the sense of the monster it's going to become. Because all we seem to do is firefight all the time. Yeah. All of the internet controllers, that's the Google of the world and the Facebooks of the world, they just seem to be firefighting all the time mm. to try and control it as it's always trying to get out of control. It's a big, scary monster. So there's mine. What would the, what would the world be like without the net? Mm. What would you change about the world in history? Who would you take away or bring or change? It'd be interesting. Let's have a read of that. Cool stuff. Right, have I got the next one? Uh, yeah, you've got a question. Let's know. Right, okay. This one, I think you're going to like this. <laughs> I think you're going to, and I think you're going to like this. And it's, if you could be a Marvel comic superhero, what would your superpower be? Right? <laughs> you can have the first one. What do you reckon? Me? Uh, I'd be very uh, angelic-like and have a healing he had to heal. Could use some of that. A bit late now, though. Yeah, say, could you do a bit of time travel as well? Time travel? Oh, yeah, I need to time travel. Time travel and <laughs> healing. There you Seven go. months will do. That, that's yeah. fine. That'd yeah, be, well, actually, that's it. Well, I could have my eye fixed as well if you could yeah. go there a couple more years. A couple more years. Yeah. yeah. So it's sliding doors. Be yeah, careful. Yeah, but it would be nice to, when you see people suffering, healing. to uh, be able to heal them. That's, that's what I would do. There was a bloke a couple of thousand years ago who had those special powers, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So we're told. <laughs> yeah. So you never know. It's God complex. What about you, mate? What yeah, do you well, he was quite good at fish sandwiches, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you had enough loads of bread. <laughs> what do you reckon? Who well, would your super, what would your superhero be? Who would you be? Well, well interestingly, I, I've already had this conversation with a couple of cronies at work. You right. know, one, one, of these, one of these silly moments when you're sitting around in the, in the quiet moments, you know, with a cup of tea, talking rubbish. Skiving in the stores. Exactly, in the stores, you know, <laughs> giggling like schoolgirls. That's it. And we had the conversation about what would your superpower be. And, and before I even got a look at him, I was told what my superpower would be. Go on. Um, uh, uh, due to my ability to distract people with banter and cake, um, <laughs> I was named Distraction Man. <laughs> so so my, my superpower is the ability to go, ah, leave that, come and look at this. <laughs> Distraction man. Distraction man. You Brilliant. need a t-shirt. And, well, actually, and I have, I have got, a, uh, off the back of this, I did get given a t-shirt, which is a Danger Mouse t-shirt, but of course you get DM, da- distra- <laughs> Distraction Man. So we'll have to have that for the so, next Q&A. Uh, next Q&A, I will wear, I will wear my Distraction, distraction man. man t-shirt. Brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Well, that's, that's kind of, I don't really care about that, really. That's brilliant, that is. Definitely. I would always say X-ray vision. Yeah, yeah. Because I oh, think yeah. X-ray vision. Well, I want to know, have you, have, you walked, have you walked down Ringwood I would never street? go shopping down the high street. No, I would have to, I'd have to have a special visor that can switch it off. But so on X-ray demand, vision and lead glasses. And lead glasses, yeah. On demand, X-ray vision. Because, you know, knowledge is power. Yeah. And things that you can't see are often mysteries that you can't unravel. Yeah. You wouldn't have to dismantle engines to find out what's wrong. Well, alternatively, ignorance is bliss, of course. Isn't it? Well, there is that too. There's a, is this a cliche show? So, oh, no, I we should do some more cliches. <laughs> Much more interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I reckon that. For me, it, X-ray vision, that's brilliant. Just don't go shopping on no. Saturday afternoon. No. That just would be awful. So I think that's cool. We have almost, almost got to the end. That's going to be oh, a short one. So quick. That's gone so, so quick. quick. We don't want to bore people. No, no. we didn't. Now, all of those questions, we'd love you to give us your opinions in the comments underneath, so we can read them too and enjoy them. And there's just six questions there. Now, on the questions, don't critique us. No, absolutely. Well, you can if you like, but well, I'm not listening. Yeah, I don't care anyway. So we want bothered face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new relaxed me. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Nothing I, can stress us out anymore. No, that's the new regime, and it's zero stress. And less given, as they say. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Most important. Well, we're going to get back to normal videos after this. I've got the Hayabusa Street Fighter build. Mm-hmm. Call it what you like, really. Bare Bones Boosa Bare build. Bones. Made a start on that just before I had a little ride in an ambulance. Yeah. yeah. And I had to go and find out. I've got some metal work fitted. I'm Absolutely. full of titanium now. We could be called titanium twins. Well, do you know what? I would, uh, something I was going to do for the day, and, and uh, because I got distracted, funnily enough, I did. <laughs> I was going to do. Works, I, I was going to do Dell and Dave's top trumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> what, your, your stint? I'll well, raise you my well, stint. Well, I was, I was going to, yeah, because I was going to top trump you on stints, because how many have you got? I've got four. Right, well, I didn't think it was possible. I've got seven now. Seven, see, good <laughs> enough, isn't it? So. Seven, but then mine are newer than yours. So yeah. the new upgraded yeah, models. Yeah. They're probably a bit more expensive than... They're definitely than more expensive. Oh, I've yeah. got some super duper ones in oh, my wow. coronary Amazing. artery, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've got some super duper ones. And wow. they, I think yeah. we're boring them now, though. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> you have to go. Right, Can so that's it. Can we just say yeah. something? Go on, then. Just say thank you for all the wonderful messages. Yes. The support has been unbelievable. We thank you. Thank you all so much for all of your amazing support. We will see you shortly for another video. And the last words to you, sir. Well, look after yourselves. Definitely. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you next time. What she said.